I'm Johnny. And it's time for Neil. Hi, uh, I'm Neil Ciceriga. For Neil Ciceriga. I'm Neil Ciceriga. Ciceriga. So who is this guy? He is quite the personality. In fact, if you check up on Hank Green's whole tutorial of video on the internet, he's responsible for two of the fundamental pieces of online video, the animutations movement and Potter Pupper Pals. Potter Pupper? Peter Pitter Pepper Pepper Pepper? Potter Puppet Pals. It's a lot like finding out that the inventor of Homestar Runner is also responsible for a big chunk of the second best Disney cartoon ever and the second best toddler show ever. Congratulations to Phineas and Ferb and Pocoyo for making first place. So what I'm really doing here is I'm going to review his work Mouth Moves, which is this mashup album that is worth listening to. Holy crap. But before I really dig into this album, we got to talk about semiotics and sounds as a symbol. So just hold on to your hat here. Now, if you want to get into this deeper, you should check out this video by Foldable Human. It's his first work, so it's not really representative of his style, but it will give you a firmer basis than I can give. So anyways, sounds, symbols, and semiotics. So you have the signifier. Now, the signifier is the actual thing. So when we have an apple, it's that piece of of actual fruit. If you have a John A, it is the actual John A right in front of you. Well, kind of, but we're not going to get into that. Or if you have the song All Star by Guy Fieri, it's the actual set of waveforms that make up that sound. The changes in air pressure. And then you have the signified, which is all that stuff that comes to mind, like computers and the fall of man and crazy guy in a lab coat making all the techno and videos all the time or even a piece of 90s nostalgia cooked up by a insane rodeo clown that's used in way too many memes so the bare minimum of what semiotics is and how it relates to mouth moods so what Neil does, is he weaves together all these insane references and self-references and signifiers and the signified into this Mimi soupy mess. A very delicious Mimi soupy mess indeed. Like he has this insane ability to take these nostalgic 90s tracks and not only like smash them together, but turning them into actual instruments and using them to bring out a certain mood and make all kinds of insane interior references in a song and references to the overall album and then references to his suite of albums and then references to meme culture and then references to pop culture. Like there's many layers going on here. Like it's a trifle and it even has like custard and ground beef. And it's okay that it, it tastes, tastes like, like feet. feet. And it knows the right chunks of sound to grab and to turn into an instrument to make you immediately recognize that song. And his style is similar to that of sound clowns, which I'm not really going to get into, but he is way more listenable than any sound cloud I've ever heard. If you want to go learn more about sound clowns, there's a rabbit hole that's worth exploring. So he himself claims that what he produces are mashups, but mashups don't do this justice. This really feels like something different. And I'm somewhat reminded of early 90s sample culture where kids could just get a hold of samplers and start making tracks with them. And you saw things like the rise of jungle and hip hop and they didn't care about copyright. And believe me, I don't think Neil does either. It's like that wanton blatant disregard gives him room for artistic exploration. All right. As a great example, you don't really have to know the songs popcorn and let the bodies hit the floor to really enjoy floor corn. But believe me, it helps. My recommendation, just walk in blind, go download the album. Hey, it's, it's for free. Free. <gasps> free. And just sail away. Seas. Go have fun. My favorites are the track Time and also the track Annoyed Grunt, but it's all good, baby. I'd love to know what you think down in the comments below. Am I off my rocker or is there something to this? What did you think of the album? Is it just fun or is there something else going on here? What's your favorite song and why? Just a quick update. The experiments in ontological design are progressing. I'm so far thinking about three different moods. Acid techno, chilled out drum and bass, and aesthetic memes. More data is needed, but it's coming. And until next time, mouth moods are fun. Potter, pupper, pepper, pepper.